Maya 2017 introduces a number of major enhancements to the way you interact with the user interface. Prior to them, you mainly had to rely on a combination of preset panel layouts and various editors and toolsets to arrange the UI. This often meant having to know which panel layout and tools were best suited for specific tasks, and then managing them appropriately. But in 2017 and beyond, these elements have been unified into fully customizable workspaces. Maya comes pre-installed with a number of suggested ones based on common high-level operations like modeling, animating, and rigging. And you can customize any of these or create and save your own. This means that instead of switching between granular task-specific layouts and then pairing them with the right editors, you can just assign a single workspace that contains everything you need for whatever purpose you want, big or small. For example, say you want to create the scene featured in our Growing a City motion graphics tutorial. Since you have to start by modeling the base building objects, switch to the modeling workspace. Notice that Maya automatically switches to the modeling menu set and displays the polygons shelf. Additionally, it places the modeling toolkit on the right, along with the attribute editor. It also removes unnecessary components like the time slider, anim layer, and character set layer widgets to give you maximum workable space possible. Now we can easily create our cube and assign its size and subdivisions using the attribute editor. Then switch back to the modeling toolkit to perform our face extrusions. Note that in any workspace, you can enlarge your working area by clicking on tabs to collapse them. Or you can immediately zoom in and out of a specific panel using Shift Space. Or enter full screen mode using Control Space. Zooming in only closes the other panels, while full screen mode removes widgets like the shelf and time slider too. Once all the building models are complete, you can switch over to the MASH workspace to perform the MASH side of the tutorial. Again, this changes the entire layout of Maya to make it easy to work with MASH. Now the Outliner and MASH editor are on the left, while the Attribute Editor and Channel Box are on the right. Maya has also changed to the Animation menu set and displays the MASH shelf. Meanwhile, animation-related widgets like the Time Slider and the Graph Editor return, since you'll want to animate the MASH results. Now you can continue working as before. Once you've completed the animation, you want to light and render your scene, so switch to the rendering workspace. Again, Maya's layout is rearranged, but unlike the previous two workspaces, this one has a lot more editors. Even the standard rendering workspace looks quite complicated for the simple render that we want to do, so let's rearrange it to reflect our needs. Start by closing the Render Setup tab, which you can do by right-clicking it. We won't need this feature. Likewise, you can remove the UV editor, channel box, attribute spreadsheet, and relationship editor the same way. On the bottom panel, remove the extra camera perspective view and script editor. Now the layout is pretty clean. You can easily create a sky dome light and directional sun. Then use the Render View tab to preview the result. By default, this workspace has a tabbed version of the Render View, which you can remove by dragging the tab away, or redock by dragging it back to the corner. However, wouldn't it be nicer to get a live Render View? Close the Render View tab, then open the Arnold Render View. This real-time Render View will update with the viewport. Let's dock it in the UI by dragging it beside the viewport until its sidebar turns blue. Note that you could have docked this panel anywhere that highlights blue, including beside, below, or even above the current panel, 
At any time, you can also hold Control to prevent docking. You can drag the panels to resize them. Now notice if you tumble the camera in the viewport, the Arnold renderer updates appropriately. This isn't bad, but can we make it even more efficient? Start by dragging the Light Editor tab to where the Render Settings and Attribute Editor tabs are. This places it in the same group. This simplifies things even further, since we don't need to look at the Light Editor, Render Settings, or Attribute Editor all at the same time. However, it still gives us quick access to them, like if we wanted to add an environment to the render. It's important to note that, unlike the old Maya panel layouts, workspace layouts aren't saved with the scene. This allows every artist in a pipeline to receive a file in an environment that's relevant to them, i.e., a rigger receiving a file from a modeler isn't forced to first look at it in a modeling environment. However, you can save workspaces for future use or export to other artists by going to Windows, Workspaces, Save Current Workspace As. Let's call it Rendering Simple. It appears at the top of the Workspace dropdown and is also saved to your Preferences Workspaces folder as a JSON file that you can send to other users. You can then use this button to lock the workspace, preventing any more panels from being docked or undocked accidentally. Note that all of this docking functionality works in floating windows too. This is especially handy for building additional UIs when working on multiple monitors. Finally, as a note for more experienced users, this new workspace setup no longer uses the QDoc control widget, but rather a newer workspace control widget based on QSplitter. This may affect your existing custom scripted panels. See the Maya technical documentation for more information on using workspace control.